Hello. Today we're going to get started on Chapter 1, Sections A through D. Our next video will be about Chapter 1, Sections E through G. This chapter gives you an overview of the course insofar as this chapter is about the nuts and bolts of an argument, what kinds of arguments there are, how they work, and how they don't work. So let's get started. Okay, so um, as I mentioned just a moment ago, this video and the next video is going to focus on chapter one, which provides the framework for the studies that will occur in this class over the coming 15 weeks. Um, we need to make sure that the nuts and bolts of this chapter are really under your belt so that when we go on um, to make more detailed studies of, for example, um, categorical syllogisms, you already know what an argument is, you know what the parts of an argument are, and so forth. So uh, this video is going to focus on the argument basics, uh, what an argument is, uh, what a statement is, distinguishing arguments from non-arguments, and the relationship between truth and logic. Then we'll go on to cover uh, sections E through G, which uh, break down arguments into two categories, deductive and inductive, and how to evaluate each type of argument. So let's get started. First off, basically anywhere is a good place for an argument. Um, arguments are not mere disputes between people. Um, arguments are um, a part of our daily lives insofar as we're often in the business of reasoning about simple things. Let me give you an example or a few examples. Should I wake up early to eat before my first morning class or sleep in a bit but not get to eat until lunch? Should I try to work an extra shift so I can buy the latest Bioshock or use the time I'd be working to study for my biology exam instead? Should I apologize to my best friend for canceling our movie date because I really wanted to do something else? When you ask yourself and begin to answer these sorts of questions, you're engaged in reasoning. In other words, what you do, for example, is lay out the pros and cons of whether or not you should lay, wake up early to eat or uh, sleep in a bit. The pros and cons of working an extra shift versus um, studying for your exam and so forth. And when you weigh those pros and cons, you arrive at a decision. Um, and this is one way that you can think about an argument, which is going to more formally be um, a chain of reasons in support of some uh, claim or other. So first, let's start out with the uh, most basic component of an argument. An argument is made up of statements. And a statement is a sentence that makes a claim. In other words, a statement describes some state of affairs or prescribes, let's say, some course of action. So a statement is a sentence that makes a claim and as such, it's true or false. So when we're talking about an argument, we're talking about a collection of sentences that have uh, each of which has what's called a truth value. Each sentence is either true or false, and together those sentences lead you to a final sentence, which is the point of the argument. So look at each of these sentences. Is the door open? The door is open. Close the door now. And the door is open. The punctuation gives you some indication of how you're meant to take the sentence. The first one is a question, the second one is an exclamation, but the way that you read the third sentence, close the door now, and the way you read the fourth sentence, the door is open, uh, depends on the meaning of the sentence. So the third sentence gives you a command, and the fourth sentence is merely a description. So of these four sentences, the fourth one is a statement. As such, it can be a candidate for an argument. So we have a question, an exclamation, a command, and a statement. When you have a collection of statements that bear an inferential relationship to each other, you have an argument. So for example, 
and you have a collection of statements, one of which is inferred from the others, you have an argument. The statement that is inferred is called the conclusion. The statements from which the conclusion is inferred are called the premises. Here's an example. We should boycott that company. They have been found guilty of producing widgets that they knew were faulty and that caused numerous injuries. Notice that the second statement gives you a reason to believe that we should boycott the, that company, which is the first statement. In addition to recognizing the inferential flow of an argument, you can identify an argument by way of indicator words. Indicator words are like alerts. They say, hey, I have a premise coming up, or hey, I've got a conclusion coming up. The words themselves are not part of the premise or conclusion, but they tell you that one has just been asserted or is about to be asserted. So take a look at the words highlighted in blue. Since they have been found guilty of producing widgets that they knew were faulty and that caused numerous injuries, we should therefore boycott that company. Indicator words let you know what parts of the argument you're looking at. They help you to know that you're looking at an argument and which is or which are the premises and which is the conclusion. Here are a bunch of indicator words. Notice that the conclusion indicator words and the premise indicator words and phrases tell you about the part of an argument that you're looking at. Remember, they're like alerts. They signal that there is or just has been a premise or conclusion asserted. So take a look at a given argument and the first thing you might consider doing is looking at indicator words or looking for indicator words and phrases. Let's take a look at an example. Buy an Apple instead of a Windows computer because Apple computers have more features for graphic artists and you are a graphic artist. We've got the word because in this passage and the word because acts as a premise indicator word. Notice the way that the argument is laid out. Each of the premises is put one on top of the other, so is laid out one on top of the other, and the conclusion is laid out on, on the bottom. When you're working on um, identifying your premises and your conclusion of a given argument, consider reworking the argument, rewrite the argument in this way, premise one, premise two, premise three, et cetera, et cetera, and then put your conclusion on the bottom. That format will help you see the structure of the argument. Here's another example. You should buy an iPad instead of a notebook. You should also buy a Honda instead of a Toyota and a Vizio television instead of a Sony. Now notice here you have a whole bunch of claims. You should do this, you should do that, you should do the other. But no reason to believe that any of the claims is worth acting upon or is worth accepting as true. Consequently, this passage is not an argument. So there are two ways that you can identify an argument. Look for an inferential flow. Is there a reasoning process that's expressed by the argument? Another way that you can identify an argument is to look for indicator words and phrases. More specifically, consider narrowing your search whenever possible uh, to looking for a conclusion. Once you have the conclusion, you can identify the rest of the elements of the argument as premises. So one of the ways in which um, we distinguish arguments from non-arguments is by way of distinguishing an argument from an explanation. Now, just so you know, it's not always easy to do this. Uh, depending on the audience, um, depending on how much that those people know, um, one person's explanation may be another person's argument. But generally speaking, the way that you distinguish an argument from an explanation is that an explanation does not seek to prove, it simply seeks to explain. 
So compare these two examples. Because you started lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup, you will probably injure your back. Your back injury occurred because you lifted weights without first getting a physical checkup. Here is the premise. Because you started lifting weights without first getting a physical checkup, you will probably injure your back. We know that this is an argument, not simply because you have the indicator word because, but because of the inferential flow between the two parts of the passage. On the other hand, something that's already happened or that is already an accepted fact simply becomes a source of explanation. You're not attempting to prove that you didn't get a physical checkup. You're simply explaining what happened and why it happened or how it happened. I couldn't do my homework because I had to work a double shift yesterday. Question, is this an argument or an explanation? So ask yourself this, is the person trying to prove that they couldn't do their homework, right? Remember the indicator word because alerts you to, in the case of an argument, a premise coming up. But here, is it the case that you're trying to prove by way of, I had to work a double shift yesterday, that you couldn't do your homework? Or is it the case that it's an established fact that you couldn't do your homework and you're simply trying to explain it? It's an explanation. It is already a fact that the homework was not done, so an explanation is being offered. Now, just to reiterate, I know that uh, when you're first starting out, it's not always easy to distinguish an argument from a non-argument. More specifically, it's not always easy to distinguish an argument from an explanation. But if you bear in mind this concept of an inferential flow, that is that you are reasoning your way to a claim as opposed to simply accepting that claim as a fact and explaining it, then you've got a nice way of distinguishing an argument from an explanation. The last part of today's video uh, concerns the relationship between truth and logic. And this is a relationship that's not always easy to um, bear in mind as you're working. Most of us are really interested in whether or not a claim is true. And in logic, we're not so much interested in whether or not a claim is true as we are interested in whether or not the claim is supported by the other claims in the argument. In other words, the conclusion of an argument is said to be true based on the support it's gotten from the premises, not on any features of the world, any facts about the world. So that's why we distinguish between a truth value analysis and a logical analysis. When we're looking to see whether or not a sentence is actually true, we're looking to see if the information in the premises is accurate, correct, or true it is raining is either true or false. When we're looking at a, an argument, we conduct a logical analysis. In other words, if we want to know whether or not a sentence is true from the standpoint of logic, we're asking whether or not that sentence is supported by the other sentences in the argument. So when we conduct a logical analysis, we're determining the strength with which the premises support the conclusion. In this example, it is raining. When it rains, games are usually canceled. Therefore, the game is probably canceled. Here, we're looking to see whether or not the sentence, the game is probably canceled, is adequately supported. In other words, is it true based on what the premises tell us? So we're really talking about inferential truth, not factual truth. As you either begin your reading or go back into the text to reread, the following concepts are significant for you to bear in mind. First, statement, argument, inference, premise, and conclusion. 
bear those in mind as you're reading. Make sure you understand what those concepts are, what they mean, and then apply them to your analysis of an argument. So on the assumption that you have um, been given an argument as opposed to being asked to distinguish between an argument and a non-argument, what you want to do is look for the inferential flow. Try to find the conclusion. Ask yourself, what's the point? What does this person who's arguing want me to believe is the case? You also should look for indicator words and phrases. I would advise you to look for conclusion indicator words and phrases. When you do that, and you've successfully identified the conclusion, everything else in that passage uh, that's relevant to the argument becomes a premise. In addition, when you bear in mind the concept of an inferential flow, you'll be able to distinguish between an argument and a non-argument. Next up, the distinction between deductive and inductive arguments and their evaluation concepts.